Last video we extended our knowledge of linear regression to work with multiple features. Also called multivariate linear regression. We simplified the notation of our hypothesis by working with vectors. So, in this video, we will give a quick recap about vectors and matrices and we'll explain why there is another great benefit to working with matrices and vectors in real-world machine learning applications. So let's jump right in. First, let's understand what matrices and vectors are. Matrices are rectangular arrays of numbers, while vectors are one-dimensional arrays. We define the dimension of a matrix or vector as the number of rows times the number of columns and we define it as follows, r, m by n, with m the amount of rows and n the amount of columns. So for these two, we can say, this matrix is element to the set r, 3 by 2. And this vector is element to the set r, 4 by 1. However, as a vector is an n by 1 matrix and thus the amount of columns will always be equal to 1. We will just use this notation to denote a four-dimensional vector. As you might have noticed, we will use capital letters to denote matrices and we will use lowercase letters to denote vectors. If we now want to pick a specific element out the matrix, then we say, let's take the ij entry in the ith row in the jth column. If we translate this for every possible entry, we get this. So if we want to take this element, we denote it with a subscript 1 1. For vectors, this will just be y subscript i to take the ith element. As you see, the elements run from 1 up until n. So here we start at y subscript 1 up until y subscript n. This is called 1 indexed. However if you remember from previous video, our hypothesis looked like this, with x subscript 0 and theta subscript 0. That's why in machine learning we mostly choose for zero indexed vectors where we, as the name suggests, start our indexing from zero up until n1. Now, let's talk about basic vector and matrix operations. Let us start with the addition and subtraction. Adding and subtracting two vectors is fairly straightforward. The process involves combining the corresponding components of the vectors. Let's say you have two vectors, a and b, each with n components. The sum of vectors a and b, denoted as a plus b, is calculated by adding their corresponding components. Like for example this. And the difference of vectors a and b, denoted as a minus b, is calculated by subtracting the corresponding components. For example like this. Note that in order to add or subtract two vectors, they must have the same dimension, meaning they must have the same number of components. For matrices on the other hand, the same rules apply. So in order to add or subtract two matrices, they also need to have the same dimensions. Let's assume we have these two matrices, A and B. Then we can add or subtract like this. We can look to an example where we add two matrices. In fact we just add each a subscript I, J element with each b subscript i, j element. Subtraction is done in the exact same manner. We can also do a scalar multiplication, which means multiplying with a single numerical value. So for example we can multiply this vector with 5 and this matrix with 2. Multiplication of a vector or matrix by a scalar involves multiplying each element by that scalar. It is very straightforward. We just take each element in the vector or matrix and we multiply it with the scalar like this. Also for the matrix, you just multiply each element with the scalar. One powerful operation is multiplying a matrix by a vector. This operation combines the elements of the matrix and the vector to produce a new vector. The result is calculated by taking the dot product of each row of the matrix with the vector. What this concretely means is, that we take the first element of the first row and multiply it with the first element of the vector. Then we take the second element of the first row and we multiply it with the second element of the vector and so on until we did this for every element in the first row. Then we take the sum of all these different products and this will be the value for the first element of the new vector. Then we do the exact same thing for the second row of the matrix. We again take each element of the second row and multiply it with the corresponding element in the vector. Then we add all these products and the outcome will be the value for the second element of the new vector. 
We keep on doing this for all rows in our matrix. It is worth mentioning that you can only multiply a matrix with a vector as the matrix contains as much columns as the vector contains elements. Or in other words if the vector contains n elements, we can only multiply it with matrices that have n columns. A nice tool I always use to check if you can multiply a certain matrix with a certain vector is this one. You write down the dimensions of the matrix and vector. And if the inner two numbers match then you can multiply them and the result will be something of dimensions of the outer two numbers. For example, if we look back at our example and we write down the dimensions, you see that these two numbers match and the result is something of these two dimensions. Now you might be wondering why we would want to multiply a matrix with a vector in machine learning. Well let's look at it together. Let's assume you already trained a model that looks as follows. With theta 0 equal to 2000, theta 1 equal to 107 and x subscript 0 is always equal to 1 as we saw in last video. Now that we got the trained model, we want to test it. We want to see how it performs on new unseen data and see if it can perform accurate predictions. So you might give it a test dataset that contains test example. Notice that I just called this dataset the test set instead of the training set. That because we define the training set to be the dataset that is used to train the model on and to get the right parameters for our hypothesis. And once the model is trained, we can test it with new unseen data points that come from another dataset. This other dataset, we call the test set. In most applications we provide this dataset in a CSV file that we can read out with some programming language of choice. The file contains for every test example the input data x which in this case is x subscript 0, which is always equal to 1. And x subscript 1, which is the amount of horsepower. So our objective now is to write some code that will give us the predictions of the price of the car, based on these new test examples. We can do this with a loop, that might look somewhat like this. And as you see this might become a long and unpractical expression. Now this is where vector, matrix multiplication comes into play. We can just make a vector of theta, and a matrix of all input data like this. Now this matrix contains in each row a different test example and in each column a different feature. With the first column being x subscript 0, which is always equal to 1 and in the second row we got x subscript 1, which is the amount of horsepower. The nice thing about this is that we can easily read this in our application like this from the file. And that we now just can write the entire solution with one line of code. Yes I know, that's just awesome. Now the result of this vector matrix multiplication is another vector. Which is the output value or y value. So in fact, the price of the car for each test example will be in every row of this vector. So the first row contains the first test example, the second row will contain the second test example and so on. So to summarize, we get the benefit that we can write clean, understandable code in much fewer lines of code. But additionally, it might also be computational more efficient than using loops. A lot of programming languages have very optimized linear algebra libraries that can compute these multiplications very efficient. Before we move on, if you found this video helpful so far and want to learn everything about machine learning and AI, I would recommend subscribing to this channel. Also don't forget to leave any questions in the comment section below. Now that we have seen matrix vector multiplication, let's discuss some matrix multiplication properties. Unlike addition, matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning the order matters. We can immediately illustrate this with previous example. If we try to write theta times x and we look at the dimensions of the matrix and vector, we can easily see that this operation is not possible. So unlike with real number, you can't just swap places between the things you multiply. This will give a different result. Or in other words, matrix multiplications are not commutative. However, on the other hand they are associative, meaning the grouping of matrices in multiplication does not affect the result. So you can first calculate matrix B times matrix C and then calculate the result of matrix A times this matrix. Or you can start with calculating matrix A times matrix B either way you will get the same result. Moving on to matrix multiplication, this operation is more intricate. When two matrices are multiplied, the element in the resulting matrix is found by taking the dot product of the corresponding row of the first matrix and column of the second matrix.
Let's try this together. We first take the dot product of the first row of the first matrix with the first column of the second matrix. This will result in this expression and if you calculate it, it will give 58. Next you do the same with the second row of the first matrix in the first column of the second matrix. Now you do the same but with the second column of the second matrix. As you see, the first column of B is responsible for the first column of C, and the second column of B is responsible for the second column of C. In fact you can just look at it like you were multiplying a matrix with a vector. And thus seeing all columns of the second matrix as different vectors and at the end concatenating all these resulting vectors to form the new matrix. Just as we did before. Let's look at the practical use of matrix, matrix multiplication in machine learning. Let's assume that you have two hypotheses of which you want to test which one can make the most accurate predictions. Meaning that we again have a test set like we saw in the matrix vector multiplication example. If we now not only capture the parameters theta in a vector, but capture them of both hypothesis like this in a matrix. Then we can do a matrix, matrix multiplication which will give us another matrix that contains not only the predictions of the first hypothesis but also of the second hypothesis. Two crucial concepts in matrix algebra are the inverse and transpose. The inverse of a matrix, when multiplied by the original matrix, gives the identity matrix. With numbers this means if you multiply 12 by the inverse of 12, which is 1 over 12, you get as answer 1. In matrices if you multiply a square matrix with its inverse, you get the identity matrix. The identity matrix is denoted as I and it is just looks like this. With 1 on the diagonal and 0 everywhere else. The identity matrix is one of the only exceptions on the non-commutative rule of matrix multiplication. Meaning that B multiplied by I gives you the same as I multiplied with B namely just the matrix B. A second exception on this non-commutative rule is if you multiply a square matrix, meaning it contains as much rows as columns with its inverse, given that the inverse of this matrix exists, then you get the identity matrix. Matrices that don't have an inverse are called singular or degenerate. On the other hand, we can also look to the transpose of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix is denoted by subscript T and is obtained by swapping the rows and columns of a matrix. For example if we look at this matrix called A then the transpose of this matrix is obtained by switching the rows and columns of the matrix. Or in other words a subscript I, J is equal to a superscript T subscript J, I. I hope this video helped demystify these fundamental concepts of matrices and vectors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we will explain gradient descent for multiple features.